Sustainability is an often used word that I reckon is quite misunderstood as a concept. Just like the word organic has been hijacked by marketers and the whole meaning and purpose of it has been quite muddied. Now you can take simple sustainable steps at home like mulching or composting or you can aim towards a complete closed loop sustainable system. To me a sustainable system is all about one that doesn't burden the environment either through the consumption of resources or the generation of waste. So in a smaller scale think about a veggie patch that's being fed by the compost that you're creating at home and then you're being fed by the veggie patch. It becomes a perpetuating system. Now what if you could take that one step further? You could create a really balanced closed loop where you could get your veggies, you could recycle resources and you could even go fishing in your yard. Well, that's what aquaponics is all about. Aquaponics adds a pond to your sustainable system. Now that pond can be filled with ornamental or edible fish. Nutrient rich water from the pond is pumped into a grow bed. It's like a big hydroponic bed filled with gravel. Then, thanks to a special valve that's installed in it, that water overflows back into the pond through a cascade. So you're creating a closed circuit of water that flows all the way through, providing nutrients for your veggies and clean water for your fish. And then, if you're using edible fish like barramundi or silver perch, you can actually harvest them out the other end. So you can be collecting your salad and your fish. <laughs> how cool is that? Now, I'm going to go with Charlie from Ecolicious and have a look at how one of these simple systems is built, and you could do this at home. So, Charlie, tell me, what have you got planned for here? Well, what we've got here is an existing ornamental koi pond that just needs a bit of tidying up and dressing up. And what we're going to do is incorporate uh, an aquaponic grow bed with Fantastic. vegetables and a small cascade up this end just to help aerate the water a bit more. Over here, we'll put in a little bench seat so they can enjoy their pond. And I believe you're on a tight budget with this one. Yeah, we are, unfortunately. But what we're doing is we're using rocks and existing plants from the site and recycled fence posts to build the grow bed. Fantastic, of course that makes it even all the more sustainable because exactly. that's what aquaponic systems are all about. Well, I'll let you get to it, Charlie. Alright then, alright. The bulk of the grow bed is made from recycled hardwood. To give it a neat yet rustic finish, the exposed surfaces are first hit with a couple of grades of grinding or sanding wheel and then finished with a belt sander. The box of the grow bed is made from three frames stacked and fixed together. To create the frames, the sanded posts are cut to size and butt joint. Using heavy duty bugle headed batten screws ensures the joints are secure. Next, Charlie clears the area for the grow bed. Plants like this bird's nest fern will be saved for reuse. The area is measured out and post holes are dug in each corner before concreting the posts in place. It's a good idea to use one of your frames as a guide to check the location of each post hole. Once the concrete is set, the frames can be fixed to the post to create the main box. Just make sure it's nice and level. Inside the box frame, a subframe is constructed to support the liner and gravel. Next, a base plate is cut to size for inside the frame. Charlie likes to use form pliers, he's found it's more resistant to moisture penetration. The base is dropped in place to check the size and then removed for any trimming before all the edges are painted to seal them. The base plate is dropped back into place and it's time to start preparing for the plumbing. So now we're going to put the tank flange in for the bell siphon kit. So as you can see we've got these holes. What we do is we just get some paling that we've sanded up. It doesn't have to be accurate. We do that for all the holes. What we're making now is just the bell siphon shroud. I'm just going to make it a little bit higher than the top of the grow bed. To protect the rubber membrane, the frame is lined, in this case with thick geotextile fabric. The rubber membrane liner is then positioned. It's critical that it's pushed down into all of the corners and is not under any tension before it's trimmed and fixed down. A spot where the hole was drilled through the base is located and methylated spirits used to clean the area of liner before a hole is carefully cut through. Sealant is then applied to the area the flange will sit before the fitting is pushed through the base. And notice that Charlie has taken the corners off the nut edge of the fitting? That's to allow the bell siphon unit to slip over. You'll recall the bell siphon shroud Charlie measured up before? Here it is completed. It's been cut to length and then had a range of holes drilled in it and cross cuts made at various points. This is all to allow water to drain in but not let any gravel through. It's positioned over the fitted tank flange and then large river pebbles are carefully stacked against it to hold it in place. A line of these larger pebbles is run up the base of the bed to create a clear drainage void before the bed is filled to the top lip with washed 10mm river pebbles. A capping frame is made for the top of the bed. The same recycled timber is used but it's laid down flat and the corners are mitered at 45 degrees. A tip from Charlie is to assemble this on a flat surface with the face side pointing down. That way the joints will all be nice and flush. We've now connected the pump, so nutrient rich pond water is being pumped and filling up this grow bed. What we'll do now is we'll drop this bell siphon into the grow bed. 
The grow bed has only one output and the bell siphon regulates the flow of the water through it. Clean water leaves the bed and is returned to the pond. The bell siphon also oxygenates the plant root zone. Wow, Charlie, what a transformation. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, well, it's turned out a lot better than even I expected, and the customer's really happy with the result. Now, I see you've put in reasonably advanced herbs into the grow bed. Yes, Adam, I've used advanced plants. All I do is gently wash the soil from the roots and plant it into the gravel, much like you would in a soil garden. I add a little bit of seaweed extract to help the plants settle in and to speed up the establishment of the beneficial bacteria in the grow bed. Now, this bed's a neat size, Charlie. It could fit just about anywhere. You can tailor the size of your grow bed to suit your space. However, there are some ratios that you do need to respect. You can even use an old bathtub as a grow bed. Oh, <laughs> really? Yep. And if you don't have a pond, there's plenty of kid aquaponics systems available online. Well, now that it's all finished, it's a bit easier to understand how it all works. Yeah, well, it's really quite simple. The pond pump just pumps the water up into the grow bed. As the system matures, it's colonised by a beneficial bacteria. They convert waste from the fish into usable nutrients for the plants. As this pond was already established, it had a good population of fish. If you're creating a pond type system from scratch, just start with a few small goldfish. And it's worth noting that this type of natural or open pond aquaponic system operates slightly differently to the more controlled traditional multi-tank systems. Now Charlie, you mentioned to me something about the fact that these gardens don't use a lot of water. That sounds like a contradiction. Yeah, well actually aquaponics only uses 10% of the water of a traditional garden and what's more, you often get four times the growth rate. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now I'm starting to get the feeling that the bell siphon is the magic part of this system. Where do I get one from Charlie? Well, you can make them, but it's a little complicated. So it's easier just to buy one for Murray in Queensland. Okay, he's easy to find on the web? Oh yeah, he's very easy. <laughs> well, Charlie from Ecolicious, thank you for letting me track along with this project. It just shows how smart and sensible a sustainable system can be and how beautiful they can be. Thank you, Adam. A lot of work scored into this and uh, appreciate some of the design ideas you've thrown into the mix. <laughs> no worries. Now, Charlie tells me that Australia's leading the world in backyard aquaponics. If aquaponics is something you want to try, there's a wealth of info on the web. Look out for local names like Murray Hallam's Practical Aquaponics in Queensland or Joel Malcolm's Backyard Aquaponics in WA.